Hello everyone, I am Harsh and today we are going to discuss the 20th problem from CP31 sheet by TAD Eliminators under the 1100 rating range. So this is the TAD Eliminators website, CP31 sheet, 1100 rating box is clicked and here is the clickable link to your 20th problem. So let's move on to the problem. So the name of the problem is GCD partition. So while at Kira's house, Josuke saw a piece of paper on the table with a task written on it. The task sounded as follows. There is an array A of length N. On this array, you have to do the following. You have to select an integer K greater than 1. Split the array into K sub, -sub segments. Calculate the sum in each of K sub, uh, sub segments and write these sums to another array B where the sum of the subsegment L to R is nothing but summation J equals to L to L AJ. The final score of such a split will be GCD of B1, B2 up till BK. The task is to find such a partition that the score is maximum possible. Josuke is interested in this task but is not strong in computer science. You have to help him to find a maximum possible score. Okay, so you have been given t test cases. For every test case, you have the length of the array and the array numbers as input. And it is also given that sum of n over all the test cases does not exceed 2 into 10 power 5. For every test case, you have to print the maximum score for the optimal partition. So let's understand what actually the question wants us to do. So in the question, you are given n numbers, basically the array where you have n numbers and you will decide some value of k greater than 1. This is something that you are going to decide and you are going to split this array into k partitions. For example, if I tell you that let's suppose array contains 5 elements. Okay. And you decide that, okay, you are going to split this array into 3 sub segments. That is the value of k that you choose is 3. Now you can divide it into any subsegments. Let's suppose I divide it into subsegments like this. That's the first subsegment contains A1, the second subsegment contains A2 and A3, and the third subsegment contains A4 and A5. You can divide it any possible way you want, but if you are deciding the value of K as 3, you have to divide it into three subsegments. Once you do this, what you're going to do is you're going to add all the elements in a particular subsegment and write it in the array B. So your array B will contain the first element of your array B will be A1, the second element will be A2 plus A3, and the third element will be A4 plus A5, according to the partitioning we have done. Now your final score will be nothing but GCD of all the elements of this array B. So your final score is nothing but GCD of A1. A2 plus A3 and A4 plus A5. This is your final scope. And what is your aim? Your aim is to maximize the scope. This is what your aim is. So what you're doing, you are choosing some value of K greater than one. You are dividing your array into K sub segments, adding all the elements in a particular sub segment and writing it as an array B and the final score is nothing but GCD of all the elements of array B and your final aim is to maximize this final score. So I hope all of you understood the question well. So before discussing with the solution, let's first discuss what's the expected time complexity for this question. So if you look, the number of elements in the array is of the order of 1, 5, right? So any solution that works in big O of n or big O of n log n, or like big O of n square root of n or something like lesser than big O of n like big O of square root of n or big O of log n something like this will always work but if you have a solution working in big O of n square or anything greater than this as well like big O of n square log n will definitely produce TLE. So you have to design a solution that works within these time constraints right. So how we can do this? So if you think like what we are given, we are given that uh, you have to divide your array into k subsegments and the value of k should be greater than 1, right? This is what we are given. 
Now, what I am going to claim is, my claim is like a very important claim for this particular question. My claim is, I will always divide my array into two sub segments. This is what my claim is that I will never like two is the minimum value, right? We have to divide our array into at least two sub segments. Now my claim is that this two is the number is will always be the value of k. That is, we will always divide our array into exactly two sub segments. And why I am claiming this? So let's suppose you are not dividing your array into two sub segments. You divided your array, let's suppose, into m sub segments. Then do you all agree that the array b that will be formed will look something like this? The first element will be b1, b2, and then up till bm. Array B will contain M values if we are dividing the array A into M subsegments, right? It will contain B values. And what is your score? Your score is nothing but GCD of B1, B2, and up till BM. This is your score. Let's suppose I name this as G, that the GCD of B1, B2, BM is equal to G. Now, what I'm going to tell you all is that GCD of B1, B2, up till bn will always be lesser than equal to gcd of b1 plus b2 b3 up till bm and why i am able to tell this this is because if gcd of b1 b2 b up till bm is equal to g what does this imply it implies that both b1 and b2 are multiples of g Right, both B1 and B2 are multiples of G. Now, if B1 and B2 are multiples of G, can't I say that B1 plus B2 will also be a multiple of G? Will also be a multiple of G. Hence, it can never be that GCD of B1, B2 up till Bm is greater than the GCD of B1 plus B2 up till B3 up till Bm. It will always be either less or it will be equal. And let me take an example for this as well. The example can be, let's suppose my array elements are 2, 3, and 6. So what is the GCD of these array elements? The GCD is 1, right? Now, even if I take these elements, 2 plus 3, 5, and 6 as the remaining element, even if I take consider my array like this, then do you all agree that even now the GCD is 1? And the logic remains the same. That if GCD of these elements was 1, this means that 1 is both the multiple of 2 and 3. So 1 will also be the multiple of 2 plus 3, that is 5. And it can be that when we add the element, the GCD actually increases. For example, let's suppose the array elements were 2, 3 and 10. In this case, we know that the GCD was 1. But when we add these first two elements and take them like 2 plus 3 that is 5 and the remaining elements as 10, you will see that GCD over here has exceeded, it has become 5. So from this claim, we can say that if let's suppose you, I, was I was dividing my array into M segments, B1, B2 up till Bm, where they were the array elements that I was getting in my array B. So what I can do is I can sum up some elements from the start and then sum up some elements from the end and always divide my array elements into exactly two sub segments because I want to maximize my final score. So this is how I can do this. So when this point is clear that we will always divide our array into two sub segments, now the question becomes very much easy. How? If you are dividing it into two sub segments, so you can divide it till at any point. So if I say you that these are my array elements, let's suppose A1, A2, a3, A4, A5, and A6. So, how you can divide this? You can divide such that the first subsegment contains one element, second one contains five elements, first one contains two elements, second one contains remaining four elements, uh, first subsegment contains three elements, second one contains three elements, first subsegment contains first four elements, second subsegment contains two elements, 
first contains five, second contains one. This is how you can divide your array elements, right? Just take maximum of all the cases and you will get your answer. And how you can do this? You can easily do this. If you know the total sum of array elements, if you know that, okay, the total sum is A1, A2, A3, A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 plus A6. Let's suppose this is the total sum. So if I know this sum, can't I get this sum directly? If I, let's suppose this is my sum S1. So can I say that this sum is nothing but whatever is the total sum minus S1. Similarly, if I know this sum, I can get this sum directly, right? So if I simply run a loop from i is equal to 0 till n minus 1. So at every point, what I will do? I will just increment my this sum by the current array index at which I am. And then I will know the remaining sum, the sum of remaining elements as well. And I can find the answer. So for example, what I will do is if I just write, it, write this down as an example. So let's suppose I have five array elements. So what I will do is, first of all, I will just initialize my total sum variable. So I will have a total sum variable, which will contain the sum of all the elements of A, and I will have the initial sum variable, which is initially initialized to zero. Okay. Now I will come to this first index. I will just, to my sum, I will add A1. So now my sum is considered containing A1. And what is the remaining sum? The remaining sum can be easily calculated by total sum minus this particular sum that I have. So now just take the GCD of this sum and the remaining sum and update your answer. Just initialize your answer to some zero and just update your answer with the max of answer comma sum comma remaining sum. GCD, uh, answer as max of whatever answer you are getting comma GCD of sum comma remaining sum. Now just go to the next index. If you go to the next index, your sum is going to increase by A2. So just increase your sum by A2. So now your sum will be A1 plus A2 and the remaining sum will be A3 plus A4 plus A5. Again, update your answer. Then you go to A3, update your sum with A1 plus A2 plus A3. Remaining sum can be total, can be easily found by total sum minus sum. Update your answer and you can do this for every index. And hence, you can cover all these cases just in big of N. So the most important observation in this problem was that it is always optimal to, dis to divide the array into two subsegments to get the best or maximum possible score. So I hope all of you understood the logic well. Let's quickly understand the code as well. So for every test case, we are calling this solve function. Inside this solve function, what I am doing is I am taking input of n, then taking input of array elements v initializing my answer to zero. I will just try to, my aim would be just to maximize this answer. Then I just initialize my total sum with the sum of all the elements of array B, which can be easily found by this syntax, accumulate V dot begin V dot end comma zero LL. So this basically helps me to find the sum of all the elements of array B. Then I simply initialize my sum to zero as discussed. I went over all the index from zero till N minus two. I will, I will go only up till index N minus two, right? I will go only up till index n minus two because the second subsegment should contain at least one element. So that's the reason I am only going up till index n minus two. So i lesser than n minus one i plus plus. To my sum, I am incrementing v of i, and then I am just updating my answer with the max of answer comma GCD of what is the remaining sum? The remaining sum is total sum minus sum I have got till now comma the current sum that is sum. At the end, once I am done. By checking all the possibilities when I am dividing it into two subsegments, I am just printing my answer. So this is the code for this problem. So if I just discuss the time complexity, you look that this code runs for n. Finding the total sum again runs for n, takes n time. And inside this loop, we are finding the GCD, right? For every index, in every index, we are finding this GCD. Now, the time complexity of a GCD function, the inbuilt GCD function that we use, if we are finding GCD of, let's suppose, A1 and A2, then its time complexity is nothing but logarithmic value of maximum of A1, A2. So now if you look, if you look, the array elements are up till 10 power 9, right? And array elements are up till 10 power 9, and you have at max 10 power 5 elements. So you can consider that in the worst case, what will happen? That all elements are 10 power 9. 
So the total sum will come down to 10 power 9 multiplied by 10 power 5, which is basically 10 power 14. So in the worst case, you can assume that this loop runs for we go of n multiplied by logarithmic value of 10 power 14. So the total time complexity for every test case can be written as we go of n multiplied by logarithmic value of 1e14. And if I just talk of space complexity, if you look, we have constructed a vector for taking the inputs and that's the only extra space that we are using. So we can say the space complexity is big of n. And these are well within constraints and hence will give you AC. So I hope all of you understood it well. Thank you.